Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Sports Sit Down. We're so glad you could join us for today's show. I'm Sunil Singhani. I'm your host, and today I'm joined by the original three back at it again to talk about sports. We have Nate Martin, DJ Rulo, and Kieran Costa. Uh, we have our hot takes ready for you guys. Before we get onto that, I want to read together from Sports Sit Down, Midpen Media Center. I want to give a quick shout out to the firefighters and the first responders who've been uh, fighting all over California for the wildfires. It's a crazy situation right now, uh, but we cannot thank you enough. Uh, I know all or most of us have really felt the effects of the fires. And for those of you guys who are fighting, working to keep us safe, thank you so, so much. Uh, so without uh, any interruptions or anything, let's get to the talking about the NBA bubble. We just saw the Lakers uh, kind of run through the West and give the Heat a really tough time. Uh, they won in six games, LA's first championship since 2010, rest in peace, Kobe. Uh, that was an amazing thing, LeBron's fourth title. Uh, but we made an NBA bubble prediction for our last show, if you guys remember. And uh, looking back at it, it wasn't the best thing. Uh, let's take a look at that now uh, because it, it, was, it was really rough, honestly. I mean... Uh, Sunay, at least we made the bracket, though. I mean, this is the whole... We make it, we look back on it, and we go, wow, we completely airmailed on the whole thing. But at least we made it, so... Oh, that's true, 100%. Exactly. I'm glad if we, we don't make it. it, we can't talk about it. <laughs> Oh, that's 100% correct there. But, but I mean, guys, what, what happened? Uh, none of us picked the correct team. Uh, someone even picked Houston. I don't even know who that was. Was that? That was me and Kieran. But let's, let's, look, me. let's, look, yeah. at the, let's look at the positives first of all. I feel, like you, I feel like a big thing that we got right was Miami Heat. We, uh, we had- okay, but Nate, yes, we got that right. But it was a, it, it was, it was a, two, it was a two nothing series lead when we predicted that's that. Fair. That's fair. We, right. we, yeah, we, 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 didn't, we, we did not pick that so, one out of nowhere. Yeah. This one was in the, the, the Lakers-Rockets series was in game one, so I think that's why some people pick Houston. The Nuggets-Clippers uh, Nuggets series was in game four, I think. And, and Lakers, I think Clippers had like a 3 0 3 uh, 2 one leader. Yeah, 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 yeah. And the, and the Boston Raptors was 2-0 Boston, and the Heat basically had it under wraps. I think it was actually 3-1 at that time. I mean, uh, Nate picked Boston, which I think was honestly uh, not a bad, not a bad choice in my opinion. But, I, ha- I had that. Se- I had that series going seven. So I, but you, you got it going seven. It won seven. It did go yeah. seven, but it just went the wrong way. But I think this is something that no one's <laughs> no one's saying, and I'll have Nate and Kieran talk about this since Boston was their pick. Jason Tatum, guys, where was he? I mean, I feel like that. I think that was just. Um, his age showing up like Jason Tatum is only 23. Yes. He's had a ton of playoff experience in those in the years that he's been in the league, but he just did not look, he just did not look fit to lead a team. That's when I feel like the Celtics could have been missing Kyrie Irving. Who's been, who we knew back when he was back in, when he was in Cleveland was extremely clutch in the playoffs for the Cavs. And I don't know. I think, I think Boston's going to be back and better than ever next year. I think that Miami um, Boston, uh, 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 series has become a frequent thing that we're going to see in the Eastern Conference. That might be a big rivalry for the early part of the 2020s. Um, so, uh, and don't be surprised if it goes Boston's way next year if they do meet up. Um, and 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 I think Tatum was was at that point a little bit gassed. I mean, he 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 was something special in the Toronto series, and I don't think that was a debate. I mean, he, especially in Game Six and Seven, but. Even in the double overtime loss game six, I mean, he played like 48 minutes out of like 55 or whatever of that game. So I, I think by game five and six of the Miami series, he ran out of gas just a little bit. And also I agree with Nate. He, 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 he was not old enough to, he was not the veteran presence, veteran leader and they we needed saw, in that series. And we saw the veteran leadership of Jimmy. Yeah, Butler. Jimmy. Yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. we, it, the, that the rest besides Jimmy Butler, that's a relatively young team. I mean, Bam's only 24. Hero's obviously a rookie. Robinson, none second year players. I think actually none's a rookie this year. None's but, a rookie. Yeah, he's a rook. Um, Iggy, I- I- Iggy Crowder and Arba too. Provided some great garbage uh, presence, but it's Rod. it's a very young team. That's gonna be Haslam. The scary thing is about Miami is that 
they have enough room for another Supermax contract. I mean, the, the, the NBA executives are calling it Miami this year's top free agent destination. And I couldn't agree more. We're going to see Miami back maybe in the finals. I mean, let's, I, we, we're going to have to see. It's going to be a very interesting year next year. Mm-hmm. And I mean, I just want to give a shout out to CJ because he picked Toronto to win it all. And honestly, after a couple of games, like right after the show, uh, we recorded the show, Toronto kind of made a run and it almost seemed as if they could kind of close Boston out and maybe reach the conference finals. Uh, I know it may not look like a good pick on this bubble uh, bracket, but I actually thought like, honestly, like it was, it was not a bad pick from CJ. Yeah. I- when you make these predictions, you have to keep that stuff in mind. Like when we were recording it, because it was a bold prediction by CJ and it almost paid out for him. Yeah. Well, I, what about I, I the Clippers, Sine? Yeah. And I mean, we can go over to your side, Sine. And it's like, you know, Denver beating up on the Clippers. Like that's but a little think, unexpected. I, I, I've been a fan of this. I've been a fan of this Clipper team forever. I, I, I CJ, I don't know if you remember this, but I called them to make the finals. Uh, I, I told you and Kieran, I was just like, listen, I see, I see the n- Nuggets as, as as championship winners in 2020, and obviously that didn't happen. But it became, it was very, very close. And oh, I about as close as you can with a four-one Lakers beating up on them in five. But the it, the okay, that's that that I feel like that series had very shoddy officiating, and you you. <laughs> Yeah. No, no. I, I, I think, I think that the, 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 the Nuggets won three games, but I mean, like in my opinion, like the Anthony Davis game winner, I thought game Nuggets played a better four. game. game. Nuggets played yeah. A, I think the Nuggets the game outplayed game. the Lakers in that series. They did. And, but it was just officiating. It was officiating that cost them. And it was just experience LeBron, playoff experience showing yeah. up. Yeah, but hey, but the, the future's bright for the Nuggets. I mean, going forward, the West, I mean, I'm just looking at all these eight teams. Lakers, Oklahoma City, Denver, Jazz, Mavericks, Golden especially. Golden State's back next year. Golden, Ma- State's, back next year. Golden, Go ahead, State. Golden State's back next year. Mavericks are definitely going to take a step forward. I feel like even though they lost the first round, I think they gained. Doncic, Porzingis gained a lot of experience from that series. And, and, and they, I feel like they gained a lot of fans in that series because that was really when – if Doncic wasn't already a household name, he j- he became one in that game three. All right, that was one. That was probably the best playoff uh, performance I had, I've seen in my life, and I've seen a lot of great single handedly. Yeah, single handedly yeah. game winner, game winning shot. Just had the team on his back as a twenty one year old. No one else in the world could do that besides Luka Doncic. Mm-hmm. That kid is special. Yeah. yeah, and I mean, as for the Clippers pick, I mean, I was shocked. Uh, th- that game seven was just – that was one of the worst things I've ever seen. Uh, and I'm not putting it on Kawhi. I'm not putting it on Paul George. As bad as that. I'm honestly putting it on Doc Rivers. Uh, there were a lot of players on that team who wanted to leave the bubble. There were a lot of players on that team who looked disinterested. They had no offensive game plan whatsoever. It was just isolation ball after a certain point. Uh, I know Doc Rivers is looked at as a great head coach and all. But I think after that performance, it's safe to say, in my opinion, this is a bold prediction or may not be so bold anymore, but there's different levels to coaching. And I think Steve Kerr, Greg Popovich, Spostra, you can even put Vogel in that now, are at a different level than Doc Rivers, Brad Stevens, and, all the, all the, and Mike D'Antoni and all these other coaches. I, I, Strong I, disagree. Frank Vogel? What do you mean? I think, I think in terms of the top tier NBA coaches, you got Pop, you got Kerr. Kerr. I, I Nick think, Nurse, Nick Nurse. I forgot about Nick Nurse. CJ, Nick I gotta Nurse, give it. Yeah, Nick Nurse. I think. I think. Spo, Spo. I, 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 I agree I on Spo. Well. And Tony and Stevens because they're offensive genius. But Spolstra is that he's not the head coach of that team. That head coach is LeBron. I mean, Spolstra may have made some pretty solid calls late game. You're talking about Vogel, right? Vogel, sorry. But okay, yeah, yeah. And yeah, Spolstra obviously up in that tier as well. He's been a phenomenal co- coach this past decade. Yeah. I mean, also talk about now we're into coaching a little bit. We're looking at, into the future. We've already talked a little bit about the Mavericks, uh, but the coaching changes have just been uh, like a phenomenal, in my opinion. The Rockets getting rid of Daryl Morey and Mike D'Antoni. The Thunder uh, firing Billy Donovan. Okay, who's, who's, Sixers, who's, who's, the Sixers who's now getting the coach of the Bills, right? Or Bulls? Bulls, yeah. And the yeah, Sixers the getting Doc Rivers. <laughs> uh, let me just say something. 
this past week we have lost two of the uh, the two two of the most important sports geniuses of the 21st century just left their jobs in Billy in Billy in Billy Bean and Daryl Morey and I feel like we have to be, give a big appreciation to what they to how they brought you know analytics and money ball and that sort of thing into sports completely changed the landscape without them we wouldn't have the Golden State Warriors that team is all analytics without them we wouldn't have other teams using this high tech and high, just uh, completely um, orthodox thinking. And I feel like we just have to give a big appreciate. I just want to say a big appreciation to being Billy Bean and Daryl Morey. Oh, absolutely. You stole my thunder for the last wrangle. I was going to cover that. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's phenomenal. I mean, just how, I mean, Daryl Morey, think about this 13 seasons, never had a losing record and had to rebuild after losing Yao Ming and Tracy McGrady, prime Yao Ming and Tracy McGrady. Now, no, no losing, no tanking, no draft picks. Amazing. And what I what I what I read is that like, oh, like he, he's not only he not only succeed in basketball. Like NFL executives thinks he could become a he could be a hot uh, name for in terms of teams looking for new GMs, which is absolutely, absolutely insane to me. Yeah, Texans fans want him. Yeah, I know, um, but. That's no okay. No, what about on this? What about if we're just staying on the topic of coaching to Ron Lou to the Clippers? How, do you, do you, I don't you, like you, it. At you're, all. you're obviously that's very pretty, low uh, on Doc Rivers. Do you, I don't do you like think it at that's all. gonna? I don't like do, it do you, at all. You I think mean, he's gonna do better the, than Doc? This is the last point I'll make on the bubble because we have to move on, but I, I don't like it at all. I think Teron Lou is a, is a well respected head coach or anything, but to me, I thought the Clippers should have gone to Mark Jackson. Uh, Mark Jackson is an all-time preacher and motivator. Uh, he is – he. that's what the Clippers need. The Clippers have talent. They don't need any offensive game plan. They just I need these guys motivated and playing basketball. There's to me, reason. Doc Rivers is good at developing guys and stuff like that. Ty Lue, I don't know what he brings. I'm very critical of Ty Lue. But I think they needed a guy who could get Kawhi Leonard and Paul George mentally stronger. So, Nate, there's a reason why the year after the Warriors let go of Mark Jackson, they won an NBA Finals. It's because Mark Jackson is just not a, a good NBA coach. He, I, I, he, we get it. He's a great motivator and that stuff. But like, he could, he can't, he can't get players to play to their fullest extent. If he couldn't do it with Stephen Curry, why do you think he can do it with Kawhi or Paul George? Well, I don't know if that's completely true because he did take a 23 win team to the playoffs the next year. Uh, I agree that they weren't playing to the full potential. Steve Kerr just brought in a whole different system. Uh, but that's debatable. I mean, he did take the team to the playoffs and lay the groundwork two years in a row. I mean, I, I'm down. I'm down for Mark Jackson becoming a head coach again. I don't want to hear him call another NBA Finals in my life. But <laughs> he's just he's just not good at uh, that. That's a whole different story. I have the strong. Seems idea. like you don't like Teron Luke because of maybe winning the chip against the Warriors. Seem, seem a little angry about that. Uh, I li- I'm gonna I'm gonna plead the fifth on that, Nate. I, I I'm with you. That would be a whole other show. We can, can break we do down. It, can we do that next time. I want I want to talk about the the coach carousel the next time we do this. That'll yes, be a fun I show. think so. I, I'm with CJ because I know Please. CJ's waiting on that MLB discussion we're gonna have coming up. Rays have kind of choked Astros. The, the villain of the MLB have pushed it to a game seven. Game seven tonight, October seventeenth. Uh, then. Dodgers have started to come back a little bit. They're scaring me. The Braves are up still 3-2 at game six. Also tonight, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, CJ, let's have you start out. Who's and getting I mean, to the World Series? I'm going to be stri- straight with you right now. If anybody had told me, first of all, that the Miami Marlins would not only beat the Chicago Cubs, but make the playoffs, I would have looked at you and called you an insane nutcase before this all started. But hey, with a 60-game season, you know, anything can happen. Uh, moving on to the more serious side, though. No, I'm uh, – the Dodgers have the experience, but in my opinion, Atlanta's young roster is finally, finally coming into their element. Dansby Swanson, Ozzie Albies, their great pitching staff, Fulton Nevitz, Flowers, Acuna. that whole crew. And- Acuna, too. I mean, dude, they've, they've got a super Fulte loaded was roster. F- Fulte, he was? Fulte, no, never mind. He's done. I, I wouldn't know, dude. I don't follow the Braves. Anyway, it's like, dude, that team is just, they're young and they're loaded. And the Dodgers, they've been running the league for 10 plus years. They're starting to get up in age. And I mean, it's not even any specific area. It's just, you know, Kershaw's not Kershaw anymore. You don't have, I mean, even Jansen, dude, it's like, he's not exactly a young buck at all. 
He pitched and I think the Dodgers are going to. He played a. Yeah, he played a. He closed out that game extremely. No, 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 no. no, no, no. I, but he's. No, but I'm okay. talking age wise, dude. It's like he's not. He's not. You know, a 22 year old closer who can probably pitch for 10 more years. He's. He's like mid 30s, dude. And you're starting to break down that. I. I, mean, I sort of agree. I think we've seen the prime of Jansen. If the prime yeah. is gone, I, I agree yeah, with that. Who cares about the, the brand with the Dodgers? They. They have Mookie Betts. Mookie Betts is young. They have. I strong no, disagree to CJ. I mean, you, I mean, yes, the guys that we knew that we knew from like when they were just dominated when they when them when them and the Giants were like big right like uh, big rivals in postseason play and that stuff. But they're they still are a very talented team. They've they've had incredible. Um, they've been they've done a great job of bringing up young guys into their system, replacing some of the old guys. I mean. Uh, I can't name names off the top of my head, but they 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 they, they will be a talent. They will be a very good team for another five I can't name, years. I I I, I, I can head. name all I can name all the players you're you are thinking of right now, and I I think they have one in this lineup. They have two, maybe three players over thirty. In uh, Justin Turner, Pollux, I think twenty nine, and Muncie's thirty one. And it's yeah, not like Justin like, Turner is 35. Yeah, so young, like is, is old. Like Bellinger, they, Betts, Seager, yeah. Bueller. I mean, th- this whole core is young, I'd say. Yeah, for, for sure. But guys, who are picking and why? Dodgers. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm picking the Dodgers to come back from 3-1. Here's why. Bueller's, Bu- Bueller's going tonight against Max Fried, who's been absolutely electric this postseason. Neither of them have a decision. Uh, Freed's ERA is a tiny bit lower, but I think Bueller has proven to be a big game pitcher. We saw it in the World Series against the Red Sox as a rookie. He threw a big game two and a, I think game five or something came out of a pen or something. I'm a big bit Dodgers to come back. Bueller throws a gem tonight, and then game seven, I think the Dodgers postseason experience. <laughs> Dave Roberts has made so many mistakes. So many times in the big moment. Kershaw hasn't come up big in the big moment. And Kershaw is not going to be pitching on three days rest. I heard rumors Kershaw's going to pitch game seven. Kershaw's aging and has had like four injuries this season. He's not pitching on three days rest. They're probably going to try and do some sort of a bullpen game. Probably Julio Arias will start. But I'm going to take the Dodgers to come back. Veteran experience, explosive offense comes alive game seven. They win a slugfest game seven, Bueller gems game six. I, I agree with you on the Dodgers winning game six. I think Bueller is going to step up big time. I think I think the offense is going to be able to supply runs, but I, I disagree with you on game seven. I think I think Atlanta's going to, I think, I think Dave Roberts is going to choke this. I think the Dodgers are going to choke this. I don't see that. I think we're going to see a, a classic postseason Dodgers move and choke a game to make it to the World Series. And I see Atlanta making the series. I'm, I'm rooting for the Braves. I honestly am just because just in general, I, from a management standpoint, I love it when teams build from the ground up from their draft, from their, uh, you know, triple A, double A, whatever teams, uh, uh, and don't throw money at their problems like the Dodgers have in a way. I mean, they, they have an expensive roster, just like the Yankees cured. We, we won't have time to talk about the Yankees today, but, uh, I, I honestly like the underdogs a lot and, I'm, I'm rooting for the Braves and the Dodgers. They're, they almost remind me of the Cowboys. They're like a, in the, in the words of Stephen A, accident waiting to happen. I hope the Dodgers choke today as a Giants fan and a Barry native. Okay, so we have two Braves and two Dodgers. CJ, what are you, Dodgers or Braves? I'm, I'm running the Braves, man. I'm, I'm running Okay, the so we have three Braves, one Dodgers. Uh, what about the other series, Astros, Rays? That's gotten extremely intense. I, I, I can the last couple of days. I think I, th- I said this, I said this uh, to Kieran uh, the other night, if the Dodgers can make it out, uh, if, if the Astros can beat Blake Stell, they won't last against, um, uh, um, what's the other dude's name? Morton. 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 It, he's not going la- to last against Charlie Morton. I think, I think Morton's going to pitch an absolute gem of a game. I think, I think we're going to show like the, the, the Rays bullpen came up so clutch against the Yankees. They're going to do it again. Um, uh, it's going to be a great game seven. 
and I see the Rays making the World Series. Claude I, and Tori is I, 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 I know leader. firsthand how, how, how good Charlie Morton is in big game situations. And I, I'm going to agree. <laughs> I'm going to take the Rays. Yes, the Rays bullpen has looked very surprisingly shaky these last three games. I'd say shockingly shaky. They gave up it, the, the, the rally last night was off the bullpen the, the, the four-run sixth inning. Uh, two nights ago, the Correa, or two days ago, I guess it was a day game, the Correa walk-off was against Nick Anderson, who I thought was the, the best reliever in the postseason up to that point. But I'm going to take Morton. But, but more I'm going to take pick against McCullers. McCullers has not been good. He got roughed up by the A's, and he got roughed up in his game one start. But Morton is 2-0 with his ERA is under one. So he's having a great postseason. The bats are finally going to come alive. Maybe we have another Mike Brasso moment. Some random scrub off the bench will hit a, hit a late game home run. But the, the Rays have too much talent in the bullpen, the pitching, and the lineup. They're a deep team. They're going to dig deep win game seven. DJ. Uh, I mean, honestly, you. I'm actually surprised that, at least as of right now, that the Strohs are running with Lance McCullers Jr. Um, for Game 7. I would have bet you almost even money that they were going to go and put in Greinke to start 7. You know, Maybe this is the whole – they're playing some mind games with the Rays opener, and then they're yeah. going to put in Greinke or maybe they'll put in an opener or something. But I'm, I'm going with the Rays just more. That team is – they've just done something this year and I don't even know what it is. They've managed to turn basically being one of the laughing stocks the past decade. Plus this is the first, this is the first time they have a chance to get to the world series since 2008. They've done okay for the most part, but I've got the race just more. Cause it's like, they've actually, I think finally gotten their act together and can start doing wait, something. Wait, CJ, you, you know, Greg, you pitched Wednesday. You pitched right? game five. That you're going to bring them back on short rest. If you're trying to go to the ship, dude. You're bringing the guy back. I, I mean, yeah, Plus, we've seen strong. that. We've seen that before. I mean, he yeah. he gets paid like a top pitcher. I mean, we yeah. saw it with Mad Bum. I mean, the right? potential bullpen guy that they yeah yeah yeah. 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 Right here. So yeah. Old, yeah. honestly, I'm I'm this is a surprise. I'm kind of rooting for the Astros uh, because they are the villain of the MLB. I want to see them face the Dodgers in the World Series. That'd be awesome uh, to have that little rematch. But yeah, I don't. I think the Rays deserve it. They're to me the Rays are going to win regardless even if they lose, because what they've done so far is, is just amazing. And I'm, all, I'm always going to root for a team that's an underdog in, and, like I said, has built, been built from the ground up instead of just, you know, getting all these expensive free agents. And they're still getting better. They're still getting better. Some of their best young players are still in the minor league system. I mean, those guys are going to be coming up uh, within the next couple of years. This is not going to be the last of the Rays, unfortunately, for Kieran. Um, they're going to be giving Yankees and the rest of the MLB <laughs> some problems for – Years to come. will buy some talent and match. <laughs> oh, yes, yes. Of exactly. course they will. <laughs> okay, guys, we have just under 10 minutes here. Let's move on to the NFL. Uh, a lot of leagues to cover today. But uh, we're in week six right now. Some teams are undefeated. Uh, who surprised you in a good or a bad way? Just pick one team. Uh, Nate, we'll start out with you. I mean, I think – I think I'm going to have to go with um, – it's hard because I, 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 I want to give like a, a, a not-so-basic answer, but then like you just look at Cleveland and what they have done. I mean, I, 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 I think this is finally the year that we've seen Cleveland come together, and it's not because of Baker Mayfield at all. I think Baker Mayfield's an average quarterback at best for an NFL team. I think – I think it's mainly just because of that defense clicking. Miles Garrett is proving that he's one of the best pass rushers in the NFL. Um, I think it's because that dual-headed running back monster of Chubb and Hunt is clicking incredibly well. Who would have thought we've, we'd see Kareem Hunt ever again in an NFL jersey? I mean... That's true. He, he's back and he's thriving. He's, he's been a top 10 running back fantasy-wise all season. Um, uh, same with Chubb before he got injured. I mean... It's a very, very talented roster, and they're finally clicking. Odell Beckham Jr. having a career year for the Browns. 
Jarvis Landry having a solid year as well. I mean, it, it's just finally all clicking for uh, for Cleveland. Maybe it's because of Stefanski, Stefanski coming in and turning that team around. But I see this team turning. I see this team having a very strong rest of the season. They have a very easy schedule because they they play the Bengals again next week. They play uh, Texans, Eagles, Jaguars three weeks in a row. And then you close out the season with the uh, Giants and Jets. Like the, I, this is, I think this is an easy team for, I think this is an easy lock for the playoffs right now, looking at the schedule. Karen. Um, I'm going to go the opposite direction, a team that disappointed me. And Nate, this one's going to be a tough one to hear. All Bay Area fans, this one's going to be a tough one to hear. I'm going to say the Niners. I mean, I, I know it's also not, it's a pretty obvious choice. Nate and I both picked the Niners to make the Super Bowl before the season started. And I mean, I thought even, even with the injuries, they should, they should be four and one right now. And I don't think, I mean, lost to lot, the Cardinals. Okay. Cardinals are a good up and coming team. Beat the Jets, beat the Giants, lost to the Eagles and Dolphins. Those uh-huh. are both games at home to both. Yeah. Those are games you have to win if you want to be a championship caliber team. And, and, and I'd be worried now because that, that was a pretty, pretty darn easy start to the season and it gets real tough. The Rams, then Cam should be back when they go to New England. Then they go to Seattle, host the Packers, Saints, Rams, Bills. And then, and then they get Washington and, and I, I see them, I'm going to say I don't see them winning a game until they play Washington week 11. I, I, I just want to add on to what Karen's saying. I think the big issue, like people are going to point fingers at Jimmy Garoppolo. People are going to point fingers at the off- fingers at the offensive line. I think the big issue is secondary. I think, I think the Niners secondary, unfortunately, last year was a one-year wonder. I think this team is not a one-year wonder. I think this defense is still phenomenal besides the secondary. I think, I think Jimmy Garoppolo, if he can get into a rhythm, is a solid quarterback for the Niners. I a uh, big thing another big thing is that we we're not running the ball enough. I think we should run the ball more. That's a whole nother story. Um, it's just even when he, he like um, we both we paid Jimmy Ward in part. We paid Ward like a like a, a like a uh, like a, a Pro Bowl safety. He is not produced. Jimmy Ward's got a, a Jakuski Tart's got a contract here. He is not produced at all. And just our cornerbacks besides Jason Verrett have played like abysmal uh, uh, like horribly I, I there's there's no excuses you can't at this point you can't use injuries as an excuse because you're just not winning games you're just losing games against bad teams and it's mm-hmm. disappointing i think if you lose tonight uh, t- tomorrow night i think you're tanking i think you have to try and get like a, a top 10 pick in the draft grab a good cornerback and go from there cj who do you have I'm going to take a one that your guys are probably not thinking about uh, Minnesota, the Vikings coming in and on paper, pretty good roster. I mean, given, you know, Kirk cousins, isn't great anymore. You know, you don't really have a core a good, any good wide receivers. You got Adam Thielen, but if that's your best, it's pretty good. Dalvin cook is your running back. Kyle Rudolph tight end. Like, so you're looking at it. It's okay, but they've underperformed, especially given who they've had to, to face. Uh, oh, hang on. I think they've had a very hard schedule. I think, I think, no, no, but even still, it's like how you, the one easy game. They one had, in, it's like one in four though. You could have beat. And it's like, and two of these games, you lost by one point. It that that's the, what your defense can't step up. And win. cause it's like, I will give the, I will give them the Packers game. They got blown out by nine. They lost to the Colts by 17. I was like, okay, fine. Whatever you lose to Tennessee and you lose to Seattle by two points combined. And your only wins against Houston And it's not exactly getting any easier from here. You've still got to face Green Bay. You've got to face Dallas twice. You got to face Chicago twice. Dallas twice. Yeah. Uh, Sorry, Dallas once. My bad. I don't know. I don't know my own conferences. Oh, and New Orleans on Christmas Day. Like I'm also I'm also going to go with a bad team. Uh, The Eagles. They play completely pathetic football. I can't elaborate much because unfortunately we're out of time uh, for the show. Uh, thank you guys for joining us uh, t- Sunday, tomorrow, full slate of games, NFL. Uh, the MLB will be heating up for the World Series, and we hope to have that covered. Uh, for Nate Martin, CJ Rulo, Kieran Costa, I'm Sinais Ngani signing off. Take care, everyone.